Welcome to Real Talk Real Women. My name is Miriam Kaladi and today we have fitness competitor, model, innovator and owner slash jewelry designer at Creative Kalina & Co. Kalina Gijineva on the show. Welcome Jalina. How are you? I'm doing great, thank you. <laughs> so, today you are a fitness role model and motivator for women from all walks of life, but you fought your way through some serious health issues to get there. Tell us about that. Well, um, you know what, I'm 5'9". I'm very tall considered to um, you know the average height of people. And when I started developing as a pre-teenager, my height kind of like took me over when many people start telling me, you should be a model, you should be a model, you should be a model. Um, I grew up in a family that does not have any fitness background, you know. Um, I grew up in a small town in Crimea, in the Black Sea, former USSR. And, um, you know, for me to have food on the table, it was a blessing already, you know. Um, my father was in the military, my mom was housewife and a seamstress and, you know, tried to pull off uh, all kind of like income on the side as she could. And, you know, the idea of becoming a model, I thought that's probably the route to go. But uh, without having any education about uh, proper nutrition and how to maintain the body, when I start developing as a teenager and, you know, like my figures start getting fuller, I start getting uh, dictated by the, uh, you know, like modeling agency that I should lose weight, I should lose 5 kilos, I should lose 10 kilos. And it started like messing with my brain with the, when um, I think it's pretty, it's the first sign of when I kind of like start playing with not eating, probably was about 15 years old, when I was getting ready for the runway show, local runway show, and you know, we went for the dress, for the, um, dress fitting and tell me, you just need to lose a couple of kilos, couple of kilos. So without knowing how to lose the proper couple of kilos, um, it started with starting, not eating this, not eating that, and there's something, look, I think it's, a, it's very amazing what the power of mind can do, where it can totally kill you and destroy you. And, you know, the food starts looking disgusting, you know, the joy in the stomach of, um, you know, feeling hungry start making you feel good because the hungry you are, the more, you know, you gotta, you look skinnier. And then start getting to the point that I remember clearly, um, I start getting on that side, but I did not get to the point where I fainted because um, I kind of got redirected in the different direction when I wanted to become a clothing designer. Since I was little, I was sewing clothing. My mom seamstress, my aunt seamstress. And to me, you know, the dream of becoming a designer and tailor was like the thing on my mind more than modeling. But uh, later on when I moved to the United States, um, you know, went to Santa Monica City College, you know, pursue my career in a creative world, you know, kind of like redirected into the art world, decided to become a graphic designer. I decided to go back to modeling. And, you know, try a couple of agencies here and the same thing, you know, like at the age of 20, you're already not young enough, you know, they're looking for 14, 15, but still had a chance, but if I would be a little bit skinnier, a little bit skinnier, a little bit skinnier, got me to, I went back to the same route of uh, not eating, and, uh, you know, um, it's, it was very kind of like scary time when I did not even realize, I truly feel that I'm blessed, that I'm protected by something higher from this universe, you know, people call God, people call a lot of attraction, I know it exists, and it's definitely, you know, Lord protect me and guided me through my life path, but throwing up here and there, you know, not eating, you know, like avoiding people, parties, you know, like, or going to parties, eating in front of everybody, and going to the bathroom, throwing up, it's got me um, to one of the mornings when I woke up, um, really starving for a few days, you know, of not eating, and I fainted. I fainted, and um, I hit the floor, and I hit with my head. And I think, like, once I hit it with my head, that's what kind of like, got me back, you know, to being awakened, and I start realizing that that's not the way for me to do this, you know, like, and I'm by myself in the United States, and I'm thinking, like, if I'll pass out like this and nobody will find me, the only way somebody will find me is, you know, with the smell of the body outside of the apartment. So that scared me to death, and I just gave up on all of this stuff, you know, went uh, pursuing my career in a creative life, you know, become a makeup artist, you know, it's kind of like, I've always been involved in this creative path, you know, through my journey that was around that lifestyle, right? Creative fashion, I would say, um, lifestyle. And then, you know, with time, 
I give up on all the, you know, like starvation. I just start eating whatever, you know, whatever makes me feel good. I decide to make myself feel good with whatever the food, you know, instead of searching for um, a deeper satisfaction for the soul, I start feeding my mind, you know, with the food and, you know, like I'm feeding my taste buds and feeding my insecurities and try to be, and try to kind of um, let go of all of my dreams when I was younger. So at the age of, I think, like 28, 27, I went back to school again to get my uh, graphic design um, certificate as a graphic designer. And, um, I, you know, um, I start realizing that at the, I, I'm not sure how many is going to be in kilos, but it's about 186 pounds, I remember, was the heaviest that I've gotten to. And uh, people say to me, oh, you're tall, you can pull it up any weight, you can pull it up with your height. It's not about what I can pull it off. It was discomfort. It was a mental discomfort that I was closing my eyes on. And I remember clearly how my third pair of jeans got torn at the same spot on my butt. And I just realized this is the sign I have to do something. So with that, um, I kind of realized the only way I have to do something, I have to learn, you know, I have to research. Um, in college, I, start, I took a fitness class, which is basic, simple class. It's just a circuit training. Just you jump from one machine to another for one hour. And because I had a good, good grades in school, I didn't want to. Um, I knew if I signed up for this fitness class, I wouldn't be able to drop it because of my uh, high grades. I didn't want to. If I'll drop that fitness class, it will affect my grades in the school. So I'm thinking, all right, this is a good trick for me to make me stick to the class, rather I want it or not. So I stick to the class. I went through uh, one semester, a couple of months in the fitness class, and I started to realize, mm, I think I can do this. Maybe it's time to get a gym membership. So I got my gym membership, and this is where the journey starts kind of like, it start, it's like the more you become interested in something, the more you open your awareness to something. And it doesn't matter, right? It's fitness, or you want to become, uh, you know, you want to go to school and get an education. Whatever it is, once you put your mind to it and you open your doors to it, it start coming, 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 coming to you when the law of attraction, the universe and God will bring you everything to your pure desire from your heart. And um, I start meeting people in the fitness industry, I start meeting people who compete, and uh, you know, I start seeing results. And once I saw my first six pack with the help um, of an amazing, you know, fitness competitor from Vegas, April, April Dwees, um, I realized that I think I can do something more. You know, I got inspired by um, very well-known athlete and IV the pro, um, Larissa Reese. When I saw her physique, I'm like, oh my God, this is the physique that I want to develop. You know, she's masculine, but yet feminine and sexy, and she represented fashion and style that always been in me since I was a teenager, you know, since I was a kid, you know. I remember making myself dresses, making dresses for the dolls, like, to me, it's kind of like I start remembering who I was when I was a teenager, and in the kid, what was my dreams? And with that, I start seeing my progress that I said, I want to compete in figure, like, I want to, like, you know, there's a different division in the bodybuilding world, and the figure, that's the physique that I felt that I feel comfortable. And I went towards that, and to be honest with you, I just cannot believe it, how I have overcome all of that past. And then I start realizing how many women they're struggling with that, and they don't have that strength, and they don't have that power, and they don't have that you know, in them to overcome that, and, um, you know, I'm always, I always was making jewelry, you know, I did graphic design, to be honest with you, I was all over the place, my creativity just pours out of my pores, like, I make dresses, I draw, I make websites, I do graphic design, you know, like, I maintain my all online store, you know, I am the shipping, I am the customer service, um, I am the graphic designer, I am the online maintenance for my store, I am pretty much everything except my manufacturer who does, who's my precious jewelry and bring my ideas to life in silver. So with all of that in mind, I start realizing that if you truly want something, it's really possible. And um, I already was making jewelry and all I did, I just added a dumbbell. And then I realized how many people struggling with that, and I have seen people reaching out to me, emailing me that they struggle with something, and I get emails, oh my God, you inspired me, yeah. And I start realizing without any intention that, oh my God, with all of the struggles, God brought me to purpose. 
every single struggle that I've been going through since my childhood, the way I was raised, you know, through the teenagerhood, with the relationship with food, the relationship with the body image, I have overcome something that many women still struggling with without even having an idea how to do it. You know, and I definitely can tell you it's not about what you eat. Well, it is about what you eat and your train and all of the stuff, but I think the most important thing comes is your relationship with yourself. Once you start loving yourself and you step aside away from your body by looking at your body, that it's an amazing mechanism that walks your spirit. You know, the source, the light source, you know, the Heavenly Father works through you. He beats your heart. He operates your lungs without you doing anything. This is where my aha moment, and I just realized God blessed me with the bigger purpose in life. And I think this is how Dumbbell Jewelry got to like birth it and overnight. I, I remember uh, one of my friends, Christina Gadang, she's a IBB pro athlete as well. Um, she was visiting my studio a few days ago. And she wanted to cry. I'm like, why do I want to cry? She's like, I remember when you used to sit at home making your necklaces. And she reminded me how fast this, you know, like, it just starts rolling, 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 rolling. It goes bigger and bigger. And it's, it only takes your, your faith in you. And when I say faith in you, it's faith in something more. Just my belief God beats your heart, and when you in doubt of yourself, you're doubting something from the higher, from above. You know, how dare you doubt your heartbeat that created you. And to me, this is where my mentality starts taking me to the next level, where I become in charge of my body. I change the relationship with the food. I don't look at the food as a satisfaction. And if I'm going to look at satisfaction, I'm a sugar addict. I love sugar. If sugar had any nutrients, I would eat sugar for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> I would live on sugar. I would make a bed out of sugar. I, you know, I would have, have family with the sugar. But um, to be honest with you, once you change your relationship with the food and you start looking at it as a source of living, and once you start satisfying your soul in a way of truly being true to yourself, I see a lot of creative people, they true to their heart, but they're not true to their bodies. Or you see a lot of people true to their bodies, but they're not true to their heart, and they go through this life struggles without having a hard time to finding that balance. When it's very simple, you just have to be. It's very hard in this society, in this world, in this universe to, not in this universe. I would say in this human world to be able to follow your dreams. You know, we dictated from the early age. You get an education, you go to school, you go to work, you have a, you have a baby, you have a family. You know what? I think it's absolutely wrong what society does. I think it's very important to educate younger people about uh, proper nutrition, about human flesh. It's very important to educate young women, young men about sex. You know, uh, it's very important to educate human being living in the human bodies. And I think this is where the world lacking out. And um, my purpose with Dumbbell Jewelry not only deliver you. Tiffany of the fitness world, you know, silver dumbbell jewelry, but um, I think my purpose is to have every woman be reminded with that item which she have overcome, that anything is possible, and I want that silver little piece of jewelry be the reminder for the next generation, when that woman or man, you know, becomes senior citizen, and he can pass that necklaces or bracelet or ring to the grandkids, and not only he's going to pass to grandkids a piece of metal, with something on it, he's going to pass his journey, his lifestyle, his health, his um, way of living as a human being in, the, in a healthy, aligned body. You know, we all come in different shapes, different heights. But once you find that little bit of physical activity, you know, like proper balanced meal, it's very simple. People tell me what to eat, what to eat. I'm like, don't look at the diet. Look, learn. Diet, it's a horrible word, diet. Like, you know, when people tell me, so when are you going to start dieting for your competition? I'm like, I don't diet for my competition. I eat clean, and I eat more than anybody else. I eat six times a day when I get sick and tired of eating. You know, people tell me, how can you eat same thing over and over? Um, I'm blessed. I came from a home that I had no chicken on my table. I grew up eating pasta for dinner with the butter and sugar as a dessert on pasta. You know, I remember there's a movie, Elf, with Will Ferrell, when he was putting, like, sugar and candy and the pasta in New York, right? I was laughing because that was me as a kid. 
you know, and uh, I truly want people to, I really, really, in my life, I want to leave a mark on this planet and raise the awareness of uh, human bodies, just because one, the human being getting, learning to accept its own human flesh and love its own human flesh. It will open different. It will open different direction into your universe. You know, like all the dreams will become reality. You know, your because once you start respecting what God blessed you with, the universe will give you anything you want for you to shine and maintain that body. The universe will give you open the doors to your dreams. The universe will give you clear mind when you eating healthy, just the basic healthy food. You know. Protein, carbs, and greens. When you make this 40, 40, 20 balanced meals through the days, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you eat breakfast. A few hours go by, you have a healthy snack. A few hours go by, you have your lunch. And you live in that daily routine when you earn your body trust. Then you can figure out what kind of physical activity you're into. I remember I used to take tennis. I, I'm tall, I see, you know, famous Russian tennis players. Why don't I try to? Awesome, not my cup of tea. You know, um, I, I did it for a little bit, and this, you know, um, then I, what else that? I remember trying all kind of things. I remember taking, like, some kind of, like, a fitness class. I don't dance. I can't even, you know, the only thing when I dance is, like, one, two, three, and this is the best you squeeze out of me. And when I go to the dancing class, I could not even catch up with the instructor. I'm like, I'm like, okay, this is definitely not my thing. And little bit by little bit, I started with cycling class. I got very blessed. Uh, my first cycling instructor was an amazing lady. She kind of like taught me how to set up the bike, how to sit in the bike properly. And I think a lot of people, they, oh, I'm scared of cycling classes. Oh, it's so hard. Yes, if you have a horrible instructor who's not going to teach you how to do this, you, you will be scared. Like, the same like going to the gym and start doing something without knowing, right? Then going into the cycling, you know, it's kind of like, took me into the next level when I started, you know, involving into the weightlifting. And it's just a journey. It's, it's, when I look at my life, I want to share my path with people for them to see that it's possible. You are no different to be in your body of your dream. You are no different. There's nothing wrong by having a hot, brick body like you always want to visualize it. Everybody, some people say, ew, muscle. Okay, you don't want to have that hard look. It's not easy to have that hard look. Don't even worry about it. It's not easy to gain muscle. If anybody could gain muscle easily, everybody would have tight asses and ripped six pack. But it takes a lot of work. But once you do these baby steps and you find your path, I see a lot of people who's passionate about yoga. God bless them. They into yoga just like I'm into the bodybuilding. To me, it works the best way. I like the weightlifting. It's I like that my gym in the time that's my time of my meditation this is how i meditate it's my stage of prayer this is where i go into the gym my mind is i'm getting connected to the higher source that worked for me when i come out out of the gym I'm, i feel like i'm reverted and i think a lot of people who's into any kind of sport like cyclists you know a little who else is there like what kind of sports and they're like tennis players they're all into it the same way and I think once you'll find it, try whatever you feel like it. Find out what classes around your neighborhood. Find out what kind of activities floats your boat. If you always like to dance, you can go with one to three steps and you're easy to pick up on somebody's. Take some kind of like classes, jumping classes. Go around to enjoy your life. And I think another thing in this fitness industry that I've noticed, um, a lot of people in the fitness industry get to bash fat people. And a lot of fat people like to bash fit people. And to me, I want to bring those two words together. And I want people to accept each other for who they are. I want to accept people. I want to teach people. Not even teach people. Just I want to raise their awareness to accept each other and appreciate each other for their achievements. You know, it's very disappointing to hear people. Bodybuilding is a different, unique sport. It's, um, it's a craftsmanship. I don't think it's a... I'm not sure if you can even call bodybuilding a sport, you know. It, it's a craftsmanship of a human flesh. It's a discipline of mind. It's a, it's a power of mind. It's a relationship of food. It's a, it's a discipline. It, 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 it's a different type of mental strength when, it's strength when it comes to bodybuilding. And I see a lot of people speaking very openly with their mind an opinion, opinionated opinion saying like, ew, muscles grow, this is this, steroids, that, that, that. I don't 
don't see anybody going to basketball player and saying, oh, you're gross, you're nine feet tall. I don't see anybody going to gymnast and saying, like, oh, you're so short and flat chested. Why is it okay for people to express their nasty opinions about athletes? It's an athlete, it's a sport. And I really want to combine those two words. Like for me, competing, it's amazing. I'm a creative being. And for me to go through this process of, you know, getting my body to deliver on stage, it's an amazing discipline that I think it's a God given for me. You know, I'm not saying that I'm a top athlete, but my idea to compete, not for the trophy, not for the first place, for my idea to compete, it's to develop what, I can, what I'm capable of, to bring myself on stage in a great outstanding condition. I know as an athlete I have a lot of areas to develop, my shoulders, my glutes, my lower back. Oh, I can go day and night about the things that I want to develop, but it's a sport. It's a part of sport. It's a part of the, you know, what I have to deliver on stage, you know, and uh, I think fitness industry can step even further by starting educating people about proper eating. I think it's very important for many athletes to open up their mouths and speak the truth, you know, and let people understand what it takes to live in a healthy body. Um, I think it's very important to, important people for uh, to realize to have a relationship, healthy relationship with food. You know, I think just like abusing drugs and abusing alcohol, it's the same thing with food. You know, you have to have balance and everything. And uh, that's my purpose and mission of Dumbo Jewelry. And I hope everybody who's having it on, um, they truly feel my passion in it and, you know, can spread the magic further beyond just, you know, doing it for themselves. I think it's very important to inspire younger people, you know, um, kids. I, a lot of parents, they kind of like don't want to do it. I understand a lot of people have jobs. A lot of people have three, four kids. And I meet a lot of athletes who have three, five kids. I meet a lot of people who's in the fitness industry have lives more harder, you know, with the sick parents, with disabilities, and they're still making it to make it to the gym. But uh, it's I totally understand the rest of the people who's uh, it's more difficult to. But as long as you made that effect on your younger generation and you let them you know, you set up a good example for them and you teach them, you guide them that direction, at least there's something you can do for your children, you know, that can change the world and um, truly align this planet to uh, be in heaven and earth like we're supposed to be in the first place. And I think once you get in this relationship with body, it uh, will open your doors to many other directions that it's very important to um, for humanity to be aware of you know once you love your body you respect yourself that respect will come towards another you will start understanding another much better you will start seeing other struggles you realize that you're not alone i think it's very important for women a lot of women in this world to share the struggles and not to be afraid of it there's nothing shame about it it's very hard in this world to be surrounded by the fashion industry when the you know like skinny girls that naturally skinny by nature i have friends who's like this girl can eat anything and she's still 100 pounds and 5'9 you know and god bless her heart she's perfect for the runways but uh a lot of people they're looking at her and uh, they're thinking this is how they should look and i think it's very wrong i think um, fashion industry should you know respect all the body shapes and bring all kind of people and i think if uh, fashion industry will deliver more uh, you know like healthier fit look it will inspire more people to do that and i think this is what i want this is exactly what i'm doing with the dumbbell jewelry that um, i want to like my slogan for the company fit and healthy lifestyle and style i remember when i started going to the gym oh my god it was so intimidating you go to the weights area and all of those guys around you and they doing something ah, ah. and you standing there like a sardine not knowing what to do it's scary do i grab this do i grab that blah, blah, blah. it took me really really big time mental work on myself to feel confident this is my place you know they're no different from me going on the floor was only one woman or maybe many times there's no woman in the weight area you're the only i'm the only girl with the dumbbells and you stand around the guys and you try to keep them off the bench are you done yet are you finished yet can i get that way <laughs> you know you have to start bossing them around but uh, with little bit by little bit i start coming out out of the black gym clothing and I started bringing 
colors into my dream. I start bringing myself who I am. I am a person who loves colors. I live and breathe by colors. The, this planet is so beautiful. There's so many colors. When I go to nail salon, they tell me pick the color. I'm like, you're crazy. I can never pick the color overnight. So, but I think the same thing is once you bring yourself into the gym, you make it more fun, and you let it be you, you keep your style of who you are into the gym, you will make the gym your second environment. Whatever fitness activity you into, once you bring yourself, your true self into it, you will find the comfort zone of being yourself, you know, and you always be yourself. And um, I think if I did it, somebody told me, like, Galina, not everybody's like you. Um... I don't have a horns coming out of my head. I don't have a tail. Why am not everybody's like me? I have the same blood and heart like everybody else. If I, I didn't, if I, I did, if the girl who struggled with all this weight issues, all this mental e issues, and people don't even know in what family environment I grew up in the first place, um, this is something that I want to speak later down the road. You know, in my business and will establish my business in a level that I can get a bigger voice and I think I'm already feel blessed that I can have a voice with people following my journey I can speak about it and uh, remind many people about it um, a lot of kids grow up in a violent environment I grew up in a family that did not have that balance my parents was not alcoholics they were not narcotics they were physically and verbally abusive towards each other um, I had a horrible grades in school, I could never get my homework done, um, but the only things that was God given and nobody could take it away from me is being creative. And I think my creativity saved my sanity and I think being creative, this is where it's aligned to my body when I look at the bodybuilding as a creative sport, it is a creative sport. You, It's unbelievable what you can do with the... Um, proper nutrition, proper exercise, the balance of proteins and carbs and a little bit of workout and your body start becoming what it, it, it's just to me it's an amazing, it's an amazing sport. I absolutely love all of my uh, you know athletes, all of my pro athletes, all of my beginners, all of my friends, you know, running workout or not. When you start looking at the body as a masterpiece, that's that's nobody can take it away from you. Even like that girl behind me I, when I saw this statue downstairs in the lobby of my building, I told the guy, security guy, I'm like, oh my God, what a beautiful masterpiece. Look at her. She's full body, but look how she's moving. She's flexible. She's herself. She's with the pose. Like, and he's like, oh, you can have her. Somebody left her in here. I'm like, no, I can't believe it. And she's a reminder to me that um, of what I've been through. To me, that's a magic. You know, to me, the magic, it's believing in yourself and uh, you know many people say magic magic I'm like I call God magic I call God magic because I believe in him with my pure heart with my pure child heart that you know still existed in me doesn't matter through what I've been through and um, I think it's very important for every woman to believe in herself and love herself just like a child yeah, what an amazing story uh, Karina long story I'm tired of myself talking <laughs> defeated anorexia and bulimia. For those unfam uh, unfamiliar, can you explain what they are and how they affected your life? Um, bulimia, it's when you uh, get disgusted of a food and you just start throwing up. You don't want to eat. And anorexia, I guess, it's when you get to the unhealthy level when you're losing your body mass and you literally starve your body and uh, you have no muscles, no fat, and literally skin and bone. And uh, it's a, I think it's a mental illness. It's not an illness from the physical perspective. It's a, more, it's a power of mind. Just like power of mind can kill you, the same power of mind can raise you up and build you up. And to me, this is where I start realizing if I was able to come convince myself that food is disgusting and you know I should be skinny and I should look like this, I should look like that, I turn around the power of my mind into what I can do. If this woman looks like that in the fitness magazine by having this body, I am no different. What does it take to get in that shape? I start learning how to train, I start learning what to eat, I'm learning more about food and I align that relationship with me and I think when people start noticing the signs of that and their friends, you know, 
they should really take into consideration and instead of bashing the friend tell them, oh, he looks so skinny, disgusting, you know, like, or this and that, I think it's very important to look at the person and to see where is that coming from because it's coming from the deep scars of a childhood, it's coming from the deep scar of, a, you know, like, a lot of women go through physical abuses, a lot of women, they go through mental abuses, a lot of women go through, um, you know, not being accepted in their own family by their parents, you know, that you're not good enough or that, you're not good enough, and it starts all in the head, and it's messing with you to the point that you're thinking, oh, maybe if I will be that skinny, somebody will like me, you know, maybe if I will look like a model, somebody will look at me. I remember clearly when, you know, as a teenager going on a date, and, you know, I was not a skinny girl, but not overweight, and he told me, I like skinny girls. And I think it's very unfair to say that to anybody, you know, and make that belief. It's the same thing like telling me, you know, like, oh, I like men with muscles. You're not good for me without knowing that person, you know, without um, being accepting human being for the being itself. You know, obviously, physically, we all know who we're attracted to. But I think it's very important how you speak to others and how you set you know, your standards to what the body should look like. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody have an amazing body. I think women with a big butt, with a big boot, with whatever you are, you are beautiful, doesn't matter what you are, you know. You're the creation of this universe. You're the beautiful heartbeat that have the most beautiful, you know, you're the life of this world. Woman gives, you know, birth to babies. How can you say no to that? How can you say no to that that's look ugly? How dare you to say that? Who are you to even judge the human flesh? That's to me, it's very important for people to realize that, you know, bulimia and anorexia, it's an illness of mind. It's the people who need the help, mental support, rather than tell you what to eat. I think once you get to know the person, you know, who's struggling with the eating disorder, you will start realizing it's a deeper and the harder scars from somewhere in the past that they're not even probably aware of themselves, you know. By when they really start looking deeper into it, they will start realizing that, um, it's all scars of something else, and it's not a physical, you know, illness, you know. It's all, it's all in the head, it's all built in the head from what society dictates and from, from the, the way how people get treated. Is it common to endure both anorexia and bulimia? I'm not sure if it's common, you know, like, I, I, I think, like, once you become anorexic, it's obviously you start stop eating. Some people probably don't throw up, you know. To become anorexic, they just start stop eating, you know, and they don't look at the food, and they discuss their food, and looking at the food, it's gross, you know. So I'm not sure if it's very common. I would love to get to know how common is that and what people go through. And um, it's I know a lot of people who's not having that relationship, being they're not necessarily anorexics, you know. I have a lot of people. I heard of a lot of people that you know in the fuller bodies and they eat whatever, and they're you know, eating horrible, and but they're still throwing up on those occasions, you know, that's, I don't think those two comes in, you know, pack up two for one, but I think those two are linked to each other, that once you start getting involved in one of them, the second one will become a partner, you know, it's, it's, it's both of those, you know, issues in the world with the woman, uh, I think it's all comes from the, um, disrespect of yourself and not having, not believing in yourself and not loving yourself enough. And I think anything you want to achieve in your life, you truly have to love yourself first. And uh, for anybody to love you, you have to learn your self-respect. You have to learn to love yourself. And once you get to that realization of who you are and how valuable is your heartbeat and how precious is your life, it will the loving yourself will bring you all the love you always wanted in the first place. You stated that you changed your life by learning to live in your, uh, to live in your body and what it needs to function. What can you share around that? I think it's very important for everybody to have a balanced meals, to learn the basics. When somebody tells me, where should I go? Um, I should be a spot model for bodybuilding.com because to be honest with you, this is where I started. I start looking into it. I start, and anytime I tap in something about food or workout, that website pops first. So this was kind of like my first Bible of uh, like eating right. And uh, I think it's very important to learn of what the human flesh needs. We need protein, we need carbs, and we need a lot of greens. And when you have those three in balance portions for your body height, 
your body weight, you will be able to maintain and reach your goals and get to your goals. And I think when people tell me, I'm on this miracle diet, no carbs. I'm like, run as fast as you can if there's no carbs in your diet. When somebody tells me, I'm on this miracle diet, I eat only beans. I'm like, okay, not until you're a professional vegan and you know how to get your vitamins and you know how to get your true proteins. Do not become a vegan and tell me that you only eat carbs and greens. Human body made out of protein, it's supposed to eat protein. And, uh, you know, if you're vegan and you do that right and you want to live that lifestyle, learn to get your good source of protein that will build, will balance what the chicken and fish and meat can get into your body to maintain it. It's very important for people to learn 40, 40, 20 balanced meals. 40% of protein, 40% of, uh, of carbs, and 20% of fat, and as much greens as you like. I think body celebrates when you eat greens. It's an amazing source of fiber. It's great for your digestive system, for your skin, for your body. To me, it's a miracle. I can speak about it all day. I can have an interview with you for three days <laughs> talking about my favorite subject. Right. <laughs> you went from 184 pounds to 145 pounds. First of all, congratulations on that remarkable achievement. Thank you. <laughs> and what are some of the key lessons you learned during the process? And what has been the hardest? Um, during this process, the hardest key? The hardest key is changing relationship with the food. You know, the hardest process is was being to have your friends around to accept you for your choices, you know, because when you, it's kind of like a cigarette smoker, you know, like when you smoke cigarettes, most of the people that smoke cigarettes around you, and you become in a circle of cigarette smoker, and you can never quit. And the same thing with the eating, you know, like you go to people's parties, you go to birthday, you go to family celebrations, you go in a food, 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 food. And when you choose that new route in your life, it becomes very hard to say, oh, I'm sorry, I cannot attend this, you know, like celebration, or maybe I'll swing by later with the gift when the food is over. It's very hard to have those people around you accept you for your transformation. It's very, it's, it wasn't easy for me to kind of like stop hanging out with people who celebrated everything around the table. And Russians, we celebrated with the food and vodka. Okay, maybe champagne and wine, but we celebrate with alcohol and food. And I think it's many cultures like this. You know, you go to Middle East, the best food, meat, wine, you know, art and all this stuff, right? You go to India, you, you, anywhere in the world you go, we celebrate with food. And this is the, I think for me, it was the hardest process is to have the people aware of your goals. I think it's very important to notify everybody, heads up. I'm making the life changes, please don't involve the stuff around me. Once you get to the next level where you have that relationship with food, it's going to be easier for you to attend to those parties. It's going to be easier for you, it's going to be okay for you to bring your own food. I remember when I used to bring my own food to parties and people give me a dirty look. Aren't you going to have a little bit of fruit tart with cherries on top and then it's only fruits and... Thank you. You know, and it's you become irritated by it, and a lot of people you know, kind of like um, without having that support, they getting back to the circle one, you know, from the beginning of where they started. And I think this is the hardest part. The hardest part is to have people around you to accept your goals. The hardest part to be strong, stand up for your dreams, and making right choices does not matter where you are. I think it's very important to have that relationship with food that you should have it with you many times, at least one, twice, you have to find a way of cooking at home. You know, I don't like cooking. To me, it's the best thing that this, the simpler the food is, the better I am. The more time I can spend in my studio running a business, the more time. To me, getting ready for competition is the best time ever because I eat simple. Um, I believe in simple food. You know, God give you simple body and God give you simple food. There is no reason to complicate it with the special recipe, you know. For me, special recipe to go to art gallery, to make a new dress, to make a new necklace, to meet an amazing people, to feed my soul, to watch a movie. That's how I satisfy myself. Have a great sex. How about this? <laughs> but uh, food, it's something you have to realize. It's something that... Uh, 
it's it's a part of the functioning, maintaining your body, so and brushing your teeth. When you brush your teeth, you don't go, you don't think about it. I want to have a golden toothbrush with the chocolate flavor toothpaste. You just brush it without doing it. The same thing in eating it. The same thing is eating food. You know, you're supposed to have your simple food. You eat, you move on, and you live your life. You smile and you enjoy the world. I love some of the quotes you share. Set your mind and just do it and create your own miracles and have faith in yourself. Some women will go, yeah, that's easy for you to say, but my situation is different. What would you say to them? We all, di we all have different situations. We all, have, we all came from something. And uh, this is reality when you really have yourself. How much do you want? Are you looking for an easy fix? Are you looking for something that's going to happen overnight? You're like a section. You know, if, if that's your route, do this way. But I think it's very important to be true to yourself and learn to educate your body. We we'll all have a different. I, my biggest blessing, every time when my necklace flies to somebody, I know it goes to somebody with a story. And I'm always telling the ladies, please share your story with me. And it's not because I want to show the world, look how many people wearing my necklaces. I don't know I have to show it. My packages, my receipts, my busy schedule, already an example of how busy I am and how many people live that fit and healthy lifestyle. But we all have something. You are not that special. You know, you are no different. You are special. You are created in this universe. But you are not different. And you're not that special from everybody else. You know, you have to look at your life. You are the one who have to make a change. You are the one who have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm ready. I want to do this. I was want I, I wanted it all of my life. How are we going to do this? Just start asking how. I think this is the next step where I think it's very important for people to open up their faith to something more. A lot of non-believers, a lot of they don't believe in anything. They don't believe in God, they don't believe in themselves, and it's great. But if you want to achieve something, you have to believe at least in fairy, at least in something for you to, to make that happen, and that's the only way for you to get there. If you, I truly believe, Heavenly Father, the universe source floats through you. Your thoughts, your vision, your ideas, that's, God given. It's not just pop into your head for no reason. When you have that idea in your head, I think it's time for me to get in shape. I just don't know how. I don't have time. When you got that idea, it means you can do it. It means you can do it. It means if that idea crossed your mind, if that idea walked into your head, if that idea possessed your eyes, your body, and you start thinking about it, it means you can do it. How? Well, um, do I have to tell you get a babysitter for your kid? Do I have to tell you uh, switch your hours job? Do I have to tell you wake up earlier? There's so many solutions. There's a home videos. There's a home workout. There's a eating healthier is way more cheaper than eating outdoor outside or eating, you know, like junk food. It's honestly to tell you it's cheaper. I even did the math. I had my meals prepared for one week in advance. I calculated. All the seven meals, six meals through the day for seven days, it came out way more cheaper than eating like three, four, five times out. And this is it's a pure example that, you know, like people in denial of their own dreams, and it's not for me to tell them how to live their life. It's rather you do it or not. You know, and don't make excuses. You know, like how people want to become a doctor, they go to school, they spend five years in school, they become a doctor. This is exactly the same with your body. You want to be in shape, you educate your body how to be in shape, you know how to eat, and you start eating it, and you live in it, and you became who you always wanted to be. It's simple. I always look at the people. Somebody come up to me at the gym the other day, and like, oh, I'm doing this challenge. You know, wish me luck. I'm, I'm like, okay, let's see. Look, let, me ask, let me ask you, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm an attorney. I'm like, wow, you spent, how many years you spent in school? Oh, I spent like seven years in school. Da, da, da. Uh, and I'm always saying, so you know, this is exactly becoming an attorney. You educate yourself about how to treat your body. It takes time, and you become in the body of your dreams. If you have brain enough to become an attorney, you now that have a problem to become fit and healthy. It's very simple. I think it's very simple and it's easy. People in denial of it. People like to see varieties. People. And it all goes back to the same thing. It's your relationship with food. Do you worship food to give you joy and satisfaction? Um, I can tell you from my perspective, yeah, I'm kind of like, do worship food when it's time to dessert. Dessert doesn't grow on trees. You don't have a cake, so you know, like on the palm trees. To me, of course, it's something that 
precious, but the rest of the stuff, you know, I think it should be very self-explanatory. If you want to make a change, you just do it. You know, it's, there's no shortcuts. There's no excuses. There's no, you do it or you don't. You know, if you don't do it, if you don't want to do it, if you don't have time to do it, accept yourself for who you are and shine and radiate in the body that you're in. And don't hate yourself. Don't bash yourself. Don't smash yourself. God gave you the body. You created the body. You fed that body. Where is it now with the food that you put in your mouth? You are a creation of your own hands. Just like you created what you eat now and what you like, it's not a problem to create that which you always wanted to be. It's exactly the same thing. Just you have to reverse whatever you did it and just do it right. And it's easy. It's easy. Once you start eating healthy without any exercise, your body starts showing you, look, look at me. I'm developing. You, you see, you didn't feed, you start feeding me every three hours. I trust you. I can burn this fat that you were sitting on all your life without workout because I don't need it. And then your body starts saying, hey, it's really nice if we're going to start moving a little bit. And then with the healthy habits, you walk in into some kind of physical activity. Park your car a little further. Walk to the store. Take your stairs instead of the elevator. Take a bicycle. Do something. Just move your human flesh. Your human body is supposed to move. You're supposed to live and breathe. And, you know, to me, having a human body is like, it's like having a horse. Honest to tell you, the, you know, the running horse. Horses, they're supposed to run and wild, they're physically active. The same as your body, your body's supposed to live and move and run and enjoy your life. Step aside away by being you. Look at your body as a gift from the universe. And then all of your excuses are going to go away. All of your ideas of what you have in mind. It's truly, 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 truly mental, mental way of aligning yourself to what you want to be. Rather you do it or you don't. You're also an entrepreneur and design beautiful and unique jewelry. Tell us about your business and how it started. This is how my business started. My business started from my transformation. My business started from my creative blessing since I was a little, since I was teenager. I always loved fashion. I always loved style. I could never I always look at people and like, oh, what style do I fit in? Do I fit in? This style, or here in that style, I could never find myself. And then I started realizing that I am the style. I am what I am. And this is what the style is, is by being yourself and true to yourself. That's the style. And, you know, Dumble Jewelry just birthed out of my creativity and acceptance of my body. It's truly inspirational. To me, when I look at my jewelry, I just can't believe it how far I have come as a kid without rich parents, without big education, you know, without without pretty much anything. This baby just got birthed into the universe. You know, when people say like, oh, once you have a baby, the universe will provide. I think it can apply to anything. When you have a dream, dream is your baby. When you have a dream in your mind, universe will provide. You know, I remember two years ago, I told my ex-husband, I want to come to school, we didn't have money for that. It's going to be too expensive. It's going to be expensive. This, bikini expensive, die, how can great, blah, blah, blah. But I was so passionate about it that I just knew I want to do it and I can. You know, and uh, that's how the Dumbbell Jewelry got birthed. It got birthed from creative heart. It got birthed from, uh, you know, learning to understand my body. It got birthed from... Uh, Faith is converted from the faith of others in me. They start seeing my potentials. I remember I told to somebody, oh, you know what? I want to do the dumbbell jewelry. I want to have this cute old school 70s dumbbell that Arnold kind of folded in his hand. There's a picture of him laying in the red tank top with the dumbbell. And, you know, I'm kind of thinking that's a, such a beautiful dumbbell, kind of like a classic dumbbell that I think. I was very inspired by the bodybuilding of the 70s. I think this is when this was very bond and it was amazing how the Arnold kind of raised that scale of a bodybuilding. It's very sad how it's died a little bit, you know, but I have a feeling it's coming back. It's coming back to the life when people start realizing that it's an amazing sport that's going to be neglected and just disappeared. And uh, Dumbbell Jewelry just, uh, just pops up. It, it, I think... I can't even explain it in one word. How did I get delivered? I think it's it's all God's work, you know, to how He delivered them. 
double jewelry when people were telling me, oh, that's a stupid idea, oh, wow, wow. how are you going to do this, who's going to manufacture that, you have to outsource to China. I'm like, no, I do believe there's a lot of craftsmanship in USA who can make this stuff by hands. You know, I do believe that this country have a chance to be that amazing country like it used to be in the 40s and 50s when made in USA carried that trophy, you know, carried that uh, spirit and that bond and that strength and the quality. And uh, to me, it's a blessing that I can bring my visions to life, provide jobs to the true craftsmanship, you know. Um, when people tell me, like, can you get my dumbbell overnight? I'm like, no, your dumbbell are made up on order. It's made by hand. It's starting from wax to mold to polishing to soldering. It's touch. It's brought up to life like any masterpiece you would wear for you to carry your journey in it to inspire your generation, your friends. You, know, you can go in a business suit to work every day. You know, nobody will see your muscles. Nobody knows you work out or not. But that little piece of accessory, that tiny sparkly thing keeps you stylish as a girl and such an amazing conversation starter. When people look at me like, is that a Do you work out? And it's like, to me, it's a sin not to speak about it. Yeah, it's a dumbbell. Yeah, I do work out. Yes, I am an addict. Yes, I have overcome some kind of weight. Yes, I was there in the past when I didn't know how to eat right. But I did it. You know, and I think it's very important that... Um, to love what you do, and um, because I love what I do, it just somehow it just it just happened. Even look, I'm speaking to you. I'm having an interview. Do you think you you? Oh my God, I'm interviewing Galina to me. Oh my God, I'm getting interviewed. <laughs> <laughs> What's the one thing you have learned as an entrepreneur that has enriched your life as an athlete as well? You know what? It's the same thing. I I I have a very strong connection. And this is how it helps me a lot in the business. Um, when you get in shape, you have to learn about what does it take to be in a healthy body, how to eat, how to work out. The same thing in the business. You have to learn the basic foundation of the business, what you need to start with, how to organize your bills, how to have the structure. To me, it's a learning process. Uh, look, I don't have a business degree like many people to establish. To me, it's, I remember last year when I got in my studio, I was like, oh, this is such a beautiful place, I have my, I want to be here. I, I didn't know all the little stuff, but it comes with time, because I wanted so much, I wanted so bad, I'm learning. I'm learning how to organize my deals, just like I'm learning how to eat properly. I'm learning how to maintain my expenses, just like I'm learning what I'm putting into my food. You know, I'm learning how to work out, and it's Everybody have different way of working out, and I think there's the same way in the business. Everybody have the way of generating income. You know, you can generate income with whatever you feel like it, and as long as you get into the kind of what does it take for you to be there, you start researching all of the stuff, and as an entrepreneur, you're gonna see the way how it's function for me. I realized that if I'm not interested in something. You can read it to me, you can write to me, you can show it into my face sometime, it will not click, it will not gonna stick to me because my body denied it with the whole life of it. But then you have to trick yourself and see how you do it. I start getting my folders for the business all in colors, just like my all in colors gym outfits, just like all my in colors spoon and forks and the plates and cups that I like to make. Look at my microwave. It makes me happy. <laughs> I have a healthy microwave. And I eat healthy. Make your life what makes your float. You know, like, I think it's very important to make your life easier. See how you make it more fun. If it's something boring, you don't feel like doing it, make it fun. You know, I'm always telling people, if you have a kid who doesn't like math, why don't you do the math with him? And do it with the fun color pencils. Do it with the fun book. Do it with the toys. Put the little toys in front of him that will make his attention and let his brain accept a 2 plus 2. And it's the same thing in the business. You know, do your business in a way that it gives you the right foundation. You know, it's all, it's not always easy to decide, oh, oh, do I invest in this? Is it worth it for me to do this, to do that? People always saying, like, um, people always approaching me with, give us free stuff, give us free stuff, I'm like, hold on a second, I have a fine jewelry, 
I have an expensive item that I handmade. It's an artwork. I can't just be throwing yourself myself left and right like this. If I had like a tank top that manufactured in China, it would be easier for me to do this. But I think it's very important to respect what you do, to love what you do, to be proud of what you do, and make it easier on the way how you want it. Like there's no right or wrong doing it. The, the result is all the same. We all have different paths. Some people are visual of learning. Some people, they can learn only by listening. Some people, they can learn only by putting their hands on it. it we're different beings. We grew up in a different environment. I grew up in an environment when I could not concentrate. My parents were yelling and screaming day and night and fighting and arguing. I couldn't do homework. To me, till this day, I'm struggling for me to sit down on the computer and do paperwork for three days. Jesus, please send me somebody to do this for me. But how can I have somebody to do this for me if I'm not doing it myself? So it's very important for you to start doing stuff on your own, to learn the basics of so it. I think for the entrepreneur, don't be afraid bit, the universe you know, to try something. Business to the level where you can have somebody do this for you and you can concentrate on the bigger stuff. I think for the entrepreneur, don't be afraid. You know, to try something, you know, like have a pride in what you do. You know, if you believe in the product, you may truly believe in it. Be represented full force, you know, stand up for it and, uh, you know, be a voice of what you do instead of just doing something and then it goes down and you don't feel like doing it and blah, blah, blah. It's the same thing with the eating. How many people you know that they give up on eating right? How many people you know that they give up on living healthy? They give up on work out? They, be, they have all of this jump ropes, yoga mats, and they don't want to do anything because they never kind of like give it a chance. It, it is thing. It's like I think having a baby is part of the, I don't have kids, but I think it's as hard as running a business. You know, you have to wake up when you don't want it to. You have to feed when you don't want it to. Sometimes you have to think how I'm going to support that when you don't want it to. It's people say it's very you know you have to have money to start the business. Um, not really. You want to start the business? It's gonna start with your passion. It's gonna start with your heart. The right people will come in. The money will come in. Just like will money will come in if you get pregnant to have a baby. The money will come into your business because your ideas. It's a God given just like a baby's. Your ideas, your visions, your passion. It comes from the same source that beats your heart. So uh, for any entrepreneur who's want to do something more in life, do it. Don't be afraid of it. The best thing is to make mistakes. Please, oh my God, if people knew what I've been through Christmas with the shippings, I've sent wrong necklace to the wrong person. I, things happen, but you learn from it. You're sometimes it's really hard to say no to people. You know, people think, oh, I have to do this, I have to do No. You have to say no to people sometimes. You have to stand up for your right and you have to stand up for what you believe in. You have to know, I'm sorry, go somewhere else. You know, you have to realize it's uh, having a business, it's easy, just like being in shape, but it does take some work. It takes some mental work, it takes some ma mental strength, you know, negotiating with people, dealing with people, you know, especially if you want to manufacture in the US. Um, you have to kind of like stand up for the price and you you have to see how can i bring this to the people and then if i'm going to have certain price i want to have a quality you know and then it's handmade and there's a quality it's so much stuff going to but it's like every business and once you believe in it and you want to do it you will find your ways of doing it you will find your way of managing your paperwork you will find your way of managing research study read something Sometimes I have to read something that I can't even read. I have somebody read it for me. I have somebody coming. My friends say, hey, please come on. And I, I have no idea what is this saying and what is leading me. You know, and when people look at me, I'm like, English is my second language. Galina, it's been uh, such a pleasure having you on the show. Where can people go to learn more about you and connect with you on the web? They can go to my website, creativegalina.com or dumbbelljewelry.com. And you can find all the links from the Facebook and there. And you can find me on the social media. You can find me on Twitter under Creative Galina. You can find me on Instagram under Dumbbell Queen. I have to hold the title. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find me on Facebook under Creative Galina. And just, you can find me anywhere. Just type in Creative Galina and Google me. Just Google me. <laughs> and I will also make sure to put your links below this video. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Is there anything else you would like to share today that you feel we've missed? You know what, this is my big message to the world. Love yourself, believe in yourself, stand up with what's right, 
be the voice of what's right and believe that absolutely anything is possible. Any ideas in your mind, anything that comes from your heart, it's a God-given and if you want it, it's going to happen. It's only going to take one desire, one passion, one step ahead of your mind and you're going to do it. Anything is possible. Absolutely anything. People made it to the space. People made it outside of the space. People made electricity. You're no different to be somebody else with your ideas. I agree. Thank you so much, Galina. It was an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you so much for watching. My name is Miriam Kaladi. For more inspiration, check out our book at realtalkrealwomen.com.